Hello friends and welcome to Knowledge by Nature. In today's video, I'm going to be giving you a flip through of multiplication facts that stick. If you're interested to see what this book holds, stick around. All right, welcome or welcome back. If this is your first time here, I am a homeschool mom to a soon to be third grader and we love all things books, homeschool and sharing our journey with you. And if that is something that you're interested in, I would love if you would consider hitting that subscribe button. And if you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. So this I picked up on a recent haul, which I'll put right here in case you're interested. But this is something that I am planning to start up next week. We are currently doing the new primary mathematics that was released this year. And if you're interested in seeing that, I will post that right here, as well as look down in the description below. But they are a little bit slower to introduce multiplication than previous Singapore math programs that we have used. And she is raring to go. She wants to learn multiplication. So we are going to go ahead and start using this so that she can one, do multiplication the way that she's wanting to do, and that we are ready to step into the next Singapore math that we will be using for third grade. So I wanted to give you a flip through. It looks a little bit intimidating because it is kind of large for a 10 week program, but I have flagged a few things up here at the top. So if I look at only the instruction, it's only that big. So um, it makes me feel a little bit better because I was like, how am I going to get through all this in 10 weeks? But this is the actual instruction or the lessons. This is by Kate Snow, and she uses something that I feel like is kind of similar to maybe a Singapore math method. So here's the table of contents. The first week we actually deal with two facts, which is facts one and two, but the rest of the 10 weeks is only dealing with one fact at a time. So week two, we're dealing with three. Week three, we're number four facts. Then we go to times 10 facts, times five facts, times six, times nine. Week eight, we're on to times seven. Week nine, times eight, and week 10 is review. Then you see that we have our game boards, our practice pages, and our answer keys. I believe that she recommends that you continue to use this along with your curriculum and not necessarily just solely by itself. So what she's talking about here is what makes this unique. She says, instead of practicing all the multiplication facts at once, that you target one small group at a time, like we saw by the weeks, we're only dealing with one fact per week except for the first week. Another way that she says that she is different is instead of memorizing the answers, they understand the meaning of the multiplication facts and use easier facts as stepping stones to harder stones. Right here, we will see a dot array. This is used throughout the entire program and it is included in the back of the book. Then we come here. So instead of drill the multiplication facts over and over, she says that we teach multiplication facts that stick. So instead of drilling the facts um, over and over, that they are exposed to the right answer enough times to memorize it, your child will practice using stepping stone facts until the answer becomes automatic. So an example of a stepping stone is we know that five times eight equals 40. So six groups of eight would be 40 plus eight. So they just, if they need to use addition to get to that next step and kind of vice versa, if they needed to subtract eight. So I think that is kind of the steps that you would take to kind of get to those harder facts. Now she has how to use this book and they recommend for addition facts, first grade, subtraction facts, second grade, multiplication facts, third grade, division facts, fourth grade. Again, this is, you base this on your child. If you think they're ready for a certain thing, then definitely go ahead. It doesn't mean that you necessarily have to stick to that. It does say that this book is designed for children who have already studied multiplication in a math program, but have not yet memorized the multiplication facts. It is not meant to be your child's first exposure to multiplication. Children need a thorough grasp of what multiplication means before they're ready to memorize the facts. 
So again, use your own discretion on that. But yes, she has had some introduction to multiplication because we were doing um, that in 1B already. And then they're finally talking about it again in our new primary math at the end of 2B semester. So she does have an idea for what multiplication is. So then we have our weekly overview, which is set up as like five days. On the first day, you have a direct teaching where you'll teach a short scripted lesson using the dot array. On days two through five, your child will recite the week's times table as a warm-up exercise. It says that the reciting timetables may seem old fashioned, but it has several time tested benefits. Then each day, you and your child will get to play a game, which I think is fantastic. Again, the games are included in the back of the book. And then here is like a list of the games too. So day one is a multiplication race. Day two is a multiplication bump. Day three, four in a row. Day four, roll and cover. Day five, over and under. So I believe these are kind of on repeat, but you're using the new fact to do that. Then there are also practice pages that are included in the back of the book to help with reviewing the week's work. Here she has some teaching tips where just schedule a consistent time to practice each day. Plan to work on the activities in this book for about 20 minutes each session with five sessions per week. Again, you can modify that schedule to fit your needs. Use the dot array used in the lessons to help them understand the strategy as well as playing the games. Here is one of her tips where instead of skip counting, try to use the closest related fact possible to find the answer. So she says, for example, to find seven times six, she might recall five times six and then add two more groups of six. Then keep your practice sessions positive, upbeat and fast paced. And then the very last one is many children freeze when they feel time pressure. Encourage your child to work as efficiently as possible, but don't time her as she does the practice pages unless she is aged 10 years or older. Then what you'll need, everything is pretty much included in the book. So you have your practice pages, your game pages, the game boards, and then you'll just need a few little everyday items here. Um, 20 small counters that could be plastic tiles, blocks, dry beans, Legos, coins, whatever. A deck of regular playing cards with the face cards removed. Two regular six-sided dice, paper, and pencil. Very minimal things that you're going to need. Like I said, almost everything is in the book. Now, let's go ahead and look at a week. Um, since this one covers two, I'm going to go ahead and go to week two so that we're looking at just one fact that week. All right, so here we go. We're looking at week two, which is going to be the remainder of the way that this program would be set up. So we're looking at our times three facts. The first page that we have here is a week at a glance where it shows you how we're gonna be working on this and the stepping stones that we may use. And we'll also learn these facts that are listed here. It says that if your child has trouble with these problems or takes more than a few seconds to solve them, make sure to teach the mental addition section in this lesson and do the practice exercises that are included in the lessons for the rest of the week. So day one, we are doing the practice mental addition. If needed, see page 42, which is our week at a glance here. As you can see, it is very, very scripted. So you pretty much just read this off of the page. It says, this week you're going to learn the times three multiplication facts. You'll need to use addition as you figure out these facts. So we're going to practice some addition first. Then it tells you to write 29 plus three on a piece of paper. Again, scripted. We'll use 10 frames and counters to show this problem. A 10 frame is just a grid with 10 dots on it, like the rows in the dot array. Instead of using 29 counters to show the problem, we're going to save time and use two 10 frames that are already filled in. Each dot is a 10 frame stands for a counter. And then it tells you to place two full 10 frames and one empty 10 frame on the table. Fill the empty 10 frame with nine counters from left to right. Again, we go to the scripted section. There are two tens plus nine more counters for a total of 29. Now we need to add three. And then it says, place three counters of another color next to the 10 frame. Script it again. 
Let's fill in the empty spot in the 10 frame to make it easier to see the answer to the problem. Then it tells you to move one loose counter to the empty spot in the 10 frame. How many 10s are filled in now? And then the child is in italic where they should answer three. It continues to go through this process where it is scripted. You have quotes if you're supposed to read that and then anything in italic is what your child would say and then the just regular print at the bottom would be notes to you or an action that you should be doing. Then you come over here and you introduce the times three facts where we are going to use the L cover again included in the book with your daughter A included in the book. Then we're going to go ahead and we're going to use the facts that we learned in our previous week to learn our times three facts. We continue to work on this. We write some problems and then we get to play our game, which is play multiplication race. Again, back of the book, everything you're going to need is in there. Then we have our independent practice where they can practice the practice pages that are in the very back of the book. And that is all of week and that is all for day one. Some of the day ones look a little bit longer than others. The next week looks a little bit shorter and I'll show you that after we go through all of this. Mental addition practice, again, see the front of the week if you need a little bit more instruction on extra practice. And then we're going to have the child use 10 frames and counters to, sol to solve the following problems. You're gonna use the same process as in day one. We have our warm up and recite. Play the multiplication bump, independent, bra independent practice. That's the end of day two. Day three, we have our mental addition practice again. We have our warm up where we're reciting our times three tables. Then we're going to play four in a row. And then we have our independent practice. Then day four. So you can see that these other days are much shorter and the content that you're going to be covering because you're just practicing these facts in fun ways. Again, mental addition practice, warm up, play, roll, and cover. But you're doing each of these with the fact for the week. Day five, mental addition, warm up, play over under. Now we've come to week three where we are our times four facts. And you will see that day one is a little bit shorter than our first day one that we had on that week two. And it looks like that's kind of the case through the whole time because when I go to the next week, again, you see that day one is not as lengthy in the amount of content that the teacher is going to be saying. And then let's go to the back section here. So here is the game boards where we have our dot array. This is the L cover that you are going to use. Of course, um, if you have a laminator, probably laminating this thing would be a great idea because I would say this little piece of paper is going to wear out quickly. Um, and then we have our 10 frame section. We have a blank one that was utilized in that week two lesson. And then you have all of the filled in 10 frames there. 10 frames are something that we see a lot in Singapore math. So this is something that is very familiar for us and will be an easy concept for us to grab. Here is the multiplication race bump board, the four in a row game board, the roll and cover game board, and then the over under game board. It does give you um, instructions on how to play these games. And so all of this is all the week's worth of games that you have at your disposal. Then the next section is our practice pages. And again, for each week, you have different practice pages. So week one, we have practice page 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B. So it looks like we have two pages of practice for each day for that week. And then you move on to week two and it follows the same setup again. Quite a few practice pages as you can see here all ready for you in the back of the book. And then for easy grading we have the answer key in the back where you have a miniature version of the practice sheet with the answers. So I am really excited about using this. She is excited about getting to learn multiplication. 
I will definitely keep you updated and letting you know about how we are liking this. It says that it is a 10-week program. Again, we will take our time with it. If it gets to be too much, we'll pull it back. But I would like to have most of this done before we start our third grade Singapore math program. So if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, I would love a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't, and we'll see you in our next one. Bye!